Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on, well, what I called in my preview, a bilge rat. Uh, this one was sitting on a boat for a long time, unused. And you can tell by the greening, by the, uh, the finish loss, uh, the paint loss, the decals wearing and everything, that uh, it was probably sitting in a bilge or sitting in a rod holder, rarely used because uh, I can tell from the line in that that it's just all salted over and crusted and you can tell from looking at the spool that there's just a good layer of dust and dirt on there. So uh, for lack of a better term we'll call this one a bilge rat pro project. Now this is not a very expensive reel, although it rides very nicely, surprisingly. And uh, that kind of leads me to say that it was probably dry and not wet, but it was all the salt spray and the like uh, that's done this thing in cosmetically. That doesn't mean that you can't take this reel fishing, and uh, you can, and we're going to make it work right. So this is a Daiwa D-Wave reel. I looked this one up on eBay not too long ago, and it doesn't sell for much. It, I think retail new, it was probably $25 or less. Uh, so probably this has been a backup reel uh, on a boat for when uh, somebody that uh, wanted to join the boat for the day kind of uh, got to fish. And uh, if it went overboard, you probably didn't worry about it. Probably didn't use it yourself. You probably uh, purchased something a little bit more substantial. But uh, this reel certainly has its role and uh, could uh, be fished all day and, uh, and worked well. So I'm going to take this one apart. We're going to uh, put this one into the ultrasonic cleaner. We're going to get rid of the braid. And I'm going to show you what's, uh, what's inside this reel in case you have the opportunity to buy it and, uh, and use it. So uh, I don't, uh, don't think it's poorly made, but I do think that it didn't stand up well to whatever was going on in that boat and on the water there. So I will uh, uh, start by taking off the exterior pieces. So on a handle, it's always a good thing to, to turn your reel, turn the handle, and see if the side opposite the handle is moving. If it is, it means that there's a, a handle screw on this side, and that handle screw is attaching through the main gear on a bar to the other side of the handle and pulling it tight. So. If you find yourself in that situation, this is the way to remove the handle. You take the handle screw out, put it into a parch tray, which I use at the bottom of a milk jug, and then you should be able to remove the handle itself. All of these are going to go into the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Next up then is um, the spool, and uh, just looking at that green oxidation and whatever the, the salt tore off of this reel, it's good to note that I do wear a plastic glove on my non-working hand. The idea for that is to keep that stuff off. Uh, if I could, I would on my uh, working hand, but I just haven't found a comfortable way to do that. Okay, we're going to remove the drag adjuster knob then. And this is just totally salted, you can see inside as well as out. So an ultrasonic cleaner should do that well and we'll, we'll give it a check we'll see how it does I'm going to remove that and I think what I'll do right here right now is take the drags out of here I don't know the effect of an ultrasonic cleaner on drag washers so uh, let's just be safe about that just get this clip out of here put that into my, my tray pull those drag washers and they appear to be uh, some kind of a fabric well, they're hard washers, so uh, we would have been okay putting this one in, but why take that chance? And as I mentioned, I'm going to take the braid off, but you don't need me need to see me take the braid off. And then we're going to put this in, and I'm thinking this probably needs some sort of a mild acidic cleaner to get that salt and, and corrosion off of there. So I may use a, uh, uh, a citric-based product, and that may take the decaling off. So if we come back with a silver spool that's clean but doesn't have the D-Wave on there, just remember that, uh, that the reel we're working with is a Daiwa D-Wave. <laughs> that's probably the only place you're going to see that is on the spool. If you look at the rest of this other than on the back of the reel seat here, there is nothing that says what this reel is. So it's not, that's not uncommon when you look at reels. Uh, sometimes these get rebranded as a whole bunch of different things. Sometimes they go out as trade reels. 
Uh, sometimes they're sold as uh, Daiwa. I don't don't know if Daiwa is doing trade wheels these days, but uh, regardless, it, uh, if you don't find any branding stamped into the the side plate, there's a chance that it might appear as something else in the same lineup. I just removed the bump guard. I'm looking up top here, and there's no break in the side case here, which means in order to get that side case off, you got to take the rotor off. In order to take the rotor off, you got to remove the click ratchet and spool adjuster. Simply pull up on those. Sometimes that spool adjuster washer there is tight, so you may have to work them off separately, but in this case, they just kind of fell off together. And now we have a, uh, a hold down screw for the rotor. And I'm noticing we have a little uh, tie down assembly on the back here, kind of hidden by the grease. And I'm just hopeful that this thing will come out because I do see some rust. Yep, we're able to get that, uh, that screw out there. This is where a parts tray is particularly valuable. Those little pieces and parts tend to just kind of shoot and jump and, uh, and the like. And I'm not working with a schematic today. So one of the things that I recommend if you're in that situation is to go ahead and take pictures. Now I'm taking pictures with the videos. Uh, but if, uh, you, if you like, take it with any still camera. Take it with a cell phone. Take it with a regular uh, digital camera. Uh, take it with an old film-based camera, I guess, if you want. But take pictures along the way at critical junctures so that you know uh, how to reassemble a reel if you do get stuck along the way. So something like as simple as this. I'm going to put this into an ultrasonic cleaner. It's probably going to take 20, 25 minutes to, uh, to do its job. In that time, you can forget little things, and uh, it's always good to have a reference point back. That's your rotor nut. It's hard to confuse this one. It's a cap nut. It can only be tightened so far, and then it's going to stop because of that uh, cap on the top of it. Then we can remove the rotor. We have a ball bearing held in by uh, two tie-downs on a clamp. So let's go ahead and pull the assembly while, we are, while we're at it. I think we can do this without removing the main gear. And these are steel screws. So, so when I say this is kind of an entry level reel for them, that's one of the compromises you make. You have a steel screw as opposed to a stainless steel screw. One of the ways you can tell it is it's magnetic. Stainless steel is not magnetic. One of the problems you have with steel screws in the saltwater environment is that they are prone to rust. And uh, then you might find yourself in trouble there. Collar comes off. We have a whole assembly here that I can pull off. And one of the things we're going to find as we take this assembly off is that we have a traditional anti-reverse. We do not have a anti-reverse that is an instant clutch. Rather, there's a, uh, an anti-reverse dog underneath that we'll see in just a moment. And um, that's uh, that's okay. But again, from a, how, do, how do these reels get priced? That's one of the ways they get priced. It's cheaper to do the old-fashioned dog assembly than it is the anti-reverse clutch. All right, this came this way. Bearing set on top of that, so we're just going to kind of remount that just so we know for now. Again, this is going to go into a cleaner for a while, so you want to keep as much of this together as you can. All right, I could have waited on uh, taking that assembly out, but I didn't. That's okay, too. I'm going to remove the side plate here so that we can take the main gear, crosswind block, crosswind gear, out. So I'm not seeing anything extraordinary in this one at all from a technology standpoint. The telltale is usually underneath here. All right, so I just noticed I can't get this screw, which means there's another uh, plate here. And that has a little um, tie-down screw inside here. I'm going to use a micro screwdriver to get that off. And I'm putting all those screws on the table here so that I know how to, uh, if any of them are a different size and shape. Okay, we can't get that off without this little fin. I don't know why Daiwa does that, but it does that. 
the overthrow arm for the anti-reverse has to be removed in order to get the trim ring off. So here goes that. Now we can move the trim ring down. And out. What I like to do with this one, that small screw here belongs in this piece. So I like to give it a turn and put that into my parts tray. This one belongs underneath here. I'd like to put that back in there. I guess if you wanted to, you can put that override arm back on as well. That's big enough that I won't lose it, I think. And then I have the third side plate screw then. So let's take that one out. And you can see that this is, quite honestly, what I call the bilge rat. It's a nice reel, but it's dirty and it hasn't been serviced. You can see the accumulated grime here. Just all around you're seeing examples of it just laying around somewhere. Here's our case. Typical of a low-end reel then we have a, a, this looks like a plastic bushing. It goes in the case. I'm going to put that bushing over to the side because I'm going to put the case into the washer. We have a traditional design here on the, the main gear. We have a crosswind block, a crosswind gear, a main gear. We're going to have a spring-fed anti-reverse up here. Let's go ahead and take the axle off. Most of the time you need to remove the axle before you remove the main gear. So as a practice, I almost always remove the axle first. You do that by taking the screw out and pulling up through the top like I just did there. I'll put that screw right back into the axle so I don't lose that. Here's my main gear. It's the, uh, the typical kind of um, pop metal or whatever we want to call that, that uh, gears are made of on the low end. It's not brass, it's not CNC turned. This one does have that little uh, arm. It's a spring that comes out. It's a, uh, I, I believe the term would be eccentric uh, spring. It's going to operate the anti-reverse dog. The anti-reverse dog is sitting up here and that little hole there is where that spring goes and I'm sure a lot of folks are going to be wondering well how in the world do you ever get that spring in that hole and we'll show you on the reassembly. Okay so I took that out. I'm going to take this crosswind block out which has got a lot of grease in it. I'm going to take the crosswind gear out. So overall tried and true design I don't think you can go bad with this wheel. I don't uh, don't find any fault with it. Is it as smooth as the high-priced reels with uh, a lot of bearings in it and metal cases or graphite cases? I'm going to believe this one's just a plastic case. It doesn't say. But uh, of course, there's compromises that have been made. But this reel's going to do what it was purchased to do. And whether it's a learner's reel whether it's a spare reel for the boat, uh, whatever the case may be, it will do what it needs to do uh, for a long time to come, properly maintained. And we could argue that this one has been properly maintained because of all that exterior uh, pain, if you will, the um, salt scarring and everything. But uh, overall, it isn't dry, and uh, it's probably been uh, fishing, but not fishing very much, but enough to keep the, the lubrication turn turning and, and moving on. Okay, crosswind block. Looking here, I don't know if that's an issue or if that's just bad stamping in a molding or whatever, but there's a little bit of a, uh, a break there in terms of where the stud rides. I don't think it'll impact performance. We will, we will see. All right, those go to my bucket. The only thing I would recommend in addition to that is we have a spring here. There's a spring on an anti-reverse uh, override. And if you're going to put this thing into um, a parts washer or anything, get that spring out of there. It's generally going to fall out if you don't. And uh, you're going to lose it. So that's what that spring looks like. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to go wash those parts now in an ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to use a citric acid based um, solution as part of that. Uh, again, it may, uh, it may 
take off more than just the uh, salt, but I think that that's uh, prudent at this part. This, this reel doesn't uh, belong to anybody at the moment. I, the boat that I work for just kind of gave it to me. So uh, let's, let's see if we can't get this one fishing again. And again, I will remove that braid so when you see this come back after the cleaning, that spool will not have the braid on it. So let's pause here and go do that cleaning. So I ran the, the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, plus and minus results from the plastic parts that were painted. They came out very clean. From the plastic parts that had the heavy greening on them, there's just maybe a little bit of greening left over here, but you can see it took it right down to the white plastic. Uh, the metal parts came down to uh, discoloration and that's kind of what I was warning about that uh, you would see that. It took whatever that mild silver coating was off of that. But it actually cleaned up the bail nicely. Go figure, it's probably steel. The spool, as I mentioned, the decal came off. I guess you can paint this whatever you want. In my case, put Dennis's reels on there or something. I don't know. But it's an aluminum spool. It cleaned up. It got rid of all of that surface uh, salting and the like. The inside came out nicely. And then I had a mixed... Uh, Mixed result on the spool button. I had it down the plastic here and that, uh, I guess, pre-coat that almost has a copper color to it. Uh, the back bump guard here, the same. I got a little bit of everything. I got the silver, I got the bronze, and then I'm right down to the bare plastic. The knob, the same. Now, those of you that watch the channel, I don't spend any time on repainting reels. Uh, so I guess if you wanted to make it pretty, you could. Uh, that's not what I do. I just get them back out fishing again. And in this case, I did what I could in terms of cleaning it up to give it a reasonable chance to uh, uh, fish without being inhibited by all the salt and uh, corrosion and the like. Okay, so let's start putting it back together then. We're going to take the case first. That's a good place to start. I'm going to grab some fishing reel grease. In this case, it's pen precision reel grease. It doesn't matter which one it is. Just make sure it's fishing reel grease. Get a little bit of grease around the stud where that crosswind block is going to ride. I'm going to grab one of those plastic bushings. Get that into the back of the case. That simply presses in. I'm going to get our crosswind gear. And make sure that that gets grease on the back side which is going to rotate. Check all the teeth on the front side, make sure that they're all even and that they're not chipped or cracked and then you got to get grease on the front side, face side as well which is where the cross wine block is going to ride. So that's what it looks like installed. Cross wine gear which we cleaned. I'm going to make sure we load that up with grease as well in that slot. We're going to hope that little ding there doesn't matter. We're going to install that over the stud, like so. And then once we do that, then we can insert the main gear. Now the main gear has a little bit of a, uh, a window on it. I'm just getting grease over the, the teeth. I've checked the teeth. They're all even. You want to move this little studs the spring so that you can see it through that window. That's kind of a peekaboo hole there where you're going to be able to load this onto the anti-reverse dog hole that we're looking for. That dog hole to remind you is here and that pin has got to go through there so it's a little bit of pin to tail on a donkey. Now most of the time you can do it this way and look over the side of it and get it set, but you can also verify that by looking through that hole. Once you do that then, <clears throat> you can put down the axle, kind of go in the reverse order that I did. Make sure your axle's clean, so wipe it down, put a little grease onto it. Don't put too much through, it's just going to squeeze out if you do. We 
bring that axle shaft through. I don't know this is probably the wrong way on the camera. So I apologize, but get your axle seated where it sits through here for the, to accept the screw. Looks like we pushed a little bit of the old grease out. We'll get that out of the way too. Here's that little screw that belongs in there. And get my micro screwdriver to put that in. And then we can grab the other bushing. There's a oops, there's a uh, washer that goes onto the main gear as a spacer. And the bushing goes back on. And the side plate goes back on. You want to make sure all the seams are nice and tight. And we had a couple of different screws here. These two are the collar screws for the pinion gear. Two long screws for the side plate went up top. The small one went below. We can load that up. Oops. Just as I'm doing that. I'm reminded that I have that little clip by looking into my my parts tray there. I have that little clip. So let's take this out again. That little clip goes here to stop the to provide the tension on the uh, the swing arm for the override. So you got to get that clip in there with spring. And do that by compressing and then we should be able to push this back in. Okay. <clears throat> While we're at it, we can grab the pinion gear and insert that. Could have done that a little bit earlier, but that's okay. And then you just want to rotate that just to make sure you got the the wire into the pinion gear. So that's set. Okay, then up top with the case again. Okay, then <clears throat> once you have that set, go ahead and put your case on. Nice snap. Two big screws go to the top. The lesser screw goes to the bottom. Tighten these down. So a decently designed reel. It, uh, it it doesn't vary from a norm, and it's been fairly consistent as a uh, as a design for a long time. All right. Next up, then we have that spacer. There's two sides to that spacer. The small side belongs up. Next up, then is our bearing over the bearing 
and we have the collar. It belongs under. That's why the ridge there. And this is where you would go back to the picture pictures if you had any questions. We'll place our collar down now. Fast clamp above. Whoops, shim, rotor shim. So the collar's on, rotor shim. Then we have the two studs that help us align that shaft and the two screws. And I see I have a spring dangling there that should be easy enough to reset. screws in. So single ball bearing wheel, plastic bushings, steel pieces, Subpar paint. Okay, so once you have that <clears throat> set up, I had the, this little spring was flopping in the breeze, and uh, I just reset that. Uh, this is an interesting setup. So this case is used on more than just this reel. This reel has that peekaboo uh, anti-reverse dog, and this does override it. However, you see that there's a setup here for a traditional dog with a traditional over, uh, override on it. So uh, somebody just adapted this case to the different design below and left the case as it is. It's always curious when you find something missing here. But you can see as we turn this that the anti-reverse is working. So it's kind of an oddball and kind of maybe a reuse of a case actually. I'm not quite sure, but I do find that uh, somewhat interesting or an anomaly if you will okay let's uh let's put the bottom of this back together again we had this we had two pieces here <clears throat> we had this which came on first that slides through and runs up that had the screw from inside and that's why we put that screw onto that little holder there but it's going back so we didn't lose it using our micro screwdriver to tighten that up. <clears throat> then we have the bump guard from this side as the tag which runs through there. Now this one did get discolored in the uh, in the cleaning. Let me grab that little <clears throat> set screw for that in the case. Wind that up. So now we have a nice gold bottom instead of silver, I guess. Now we're going to pull the screw out of the one that holds the override arm. Go ahead and put that override lever on. Just need to orient it properly. We can grab that screw. So we took what was painted silver, and now we've pretty much got a gold or a bronze base. A little bit of everything, as everybody's real. But we know one thing, it's not green anymore. And we'll just make sure that that switch is working. And you have it in the off position, you'll notice we can back turn the reel. When it goes to the forward, that back turn stops. So that's operating the way it should. So I'm going to leave that handle off for a moment. Here's our... Uh, Rotor assembly, since I did have that in the, the bath, I'm going to go ahead and oil those slots where the bale is going to be operating. 
<clears throat> you could oil this line guide, although there's no bearings in it, so it's not going to matter too much. And uh, we're going to go ahead and assemble that. Remember I said we had this cap. Which you really can't over tighten. I'm going to tighten it by hand as much as I can. And grab that wrench. Make sure that that's tight. And we'll hold down the clamp is next. And again, if you kind of are missing the the sequence or the orientation of these, you can go back to your pictures. Here's that little uh, screw that we talked about in terms of having a parts tray. It's so easy to lose these little things. Let's get that in there. Put the handle on. Set that up for a left side drive. Again, this stuff has all been in the, uh, the ultrasonic, so let's put a little bit of oil on that. Push that through. Grab that uh, funky colored uh, Handle screw now. Get that on. And we'll go ahead and put the click ratchet and spool adjuster on. Click ratchet goes next. This is the beauty of the parts tray. You'll know what's in there and what's not in there. Spool the height adjuster. Now the spool. We have to put those drag washers back in. It did clean up nicely. The only Sacrifice was that that uh, badging came off. All right, we have the three hard washers. They've been cleaned. Simply hard washer, then a round washer. They've all been cleaned. The second hard washer, then you have the eared washer. That's one with the two tags on it. That goes in the slot. There's some tarnish on that one. I imagine it's just plain steel. Last of the hard washers. Last of the round washers. And you want to get that flat clip in. Sometimes it's easier with these flat clips. They have a little bit more tension to put the back in first. Then put one side and then the other in. It's particularly if you struggle with hand strength from time to time. Which I seem to be doing here. These are harder than those pentagon type springs, but they do eventually get in. You just have to work them in. And you need to hold them because they're, they're springs. They will shoot. There you go. Now we're in properly. Actually, we have a little bit of the knot in the back of the... There we go. So that's the proper setup for the flat spring. Spool on, tighten it down. I don't know, what do you think? It's uh, it's cleaned up, there's no more green on it. It uh, will look nice with line on it. You can see the obvious uh, damage from not taking care of the reel. But you know what, the reel turns nicely. So there you go. So that's the Daiwa D-Force reel. Uh, Kind of a salvage project there. It didn't cost me anything. Probably not worth anything either, but uh, that's all about the uh, construction of the reel, how to take it apart and service it, and how to try and get it looking somewhat nice again. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. We can always use subscribers. That's what keeps my channel vibrant. And uh, if you have any comments on this or other reels, please leave the comments. I do try to reply to all of them. And uh, finally, if you have a reel that needs to be repaired or serviced and uh, you, you're not up for doing it yourself, then why don't you contact me via email on the business card that follows. And I'll be happy to provide you with that information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.